Tim here, back with another EDU in 90. And administrators, this one's for you. Today, we're going to be digging into the Chrome Education License. Wait, the what? The Chrome Education License. It's the same Chrome device management you know and love, we just slightly changed the name to allow us to build out more EDU-specific features moving forward. That's right, and many of you are probably familiar with some of the tried and true favorites here. Things like using kiosk mode to ensure a safe testing environment, 24-7 support, and the ability to use one cloud console to push apps and extensions to groups of 10 or 10,000 students, depending on your needs. So we wanted to highlight some of the features you might not be using just yet. Let's check them out. Let's start with routing through a proxy. Oftentimes, we see schools and districts send Chromebooks home with their students to extend the learning beyond the classroom day. We've heard from you that it's important that students have the same experience wherever they log in, whether at home or at school. So with routing through a proxy, like your school's filter, you're able to do just that. While some classrooms have gone completely paperless, we know that sometimes situations arise when it's just nice to be able to print a document. And by using native printing, you can use Chromebooks to print to your existing printers, either with your local network or via USB. And from the IT side, you can control how these devices, as well as users, are able to interact and access printers on your network. Any educator will tell you that every second counts when it comes to class time. Autocomplete domain can help maximize the learning time by speeding up the sign-in process. Available in your device settings, Domain Name Autocomplete at Sign-In enables you to choose a domain name to present to users on their sign-in page. Autocomplete Domain is a best practice across the board for speeding up the sign-in process, and it's especially useful for touchscreen devices and for younger students. Whew. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but for more information and resources, make sure you check out the links below. And in the comments, let us know what other features you'd like to see added. We'll see you next time. Check out our last episode where we look at some new features in Google Classroom, like reordering classes and dedicated student pages.